course this semester, I had the opportunity to learn about video platforms such as YouTube and Douyin and develop my interest in the video industry. About one decade ago, texts and pictures prevailed, and portals like Signal and social sites like Weibo were taking the leading role. Now, videos are becoming the more efficient mainstream information carriers. The operation of video platforms fascinated me. I especially want to know about how they attract hundreds of billions of users and achieved such a great success. In my final video project, due to the limited length of video, I will focus on Douyin's operation strategies and its influence on the advertising industry. I will also have one of the platform paradigms, YouTube, to do comparison and help us better understand the key elements concerning the operation of online video platforms. I have invited Chen Shi, industry analyst at SIG and Yizhou, an investor interested in video industry, to share the professional view on platform operation. As an U.S. investment firm, SIG has participated in online video platform investment. These are my research questions. My first research question is how and why did YouTube and Douyin choose their operation modes according to the recent market status? First of all, what is a market status? Market status is a combination of the user's characteristics and technology-driven factors. Um, there's, a, there's also a trend of short videos trending very quickly. If you look at TikTok, you would say that's definitely a trend taking the, at the advantage of technology developing the and then the um, the mentality of users on the internet have changed as well. In the past decade and a half, I think the form of information being migrated from text to uh, graphs and text and then to videos even more and more so lately. So the mentality changed together with the en enabling of technology for processing, uploading. On. But these days, there's several ca cameras on one phone. There's there's a lot of uh, devices that's for vloggers. So one could have a video or one could have a video shot in their own studio in their apartment and they could work remotely with producers, directors, other vloggers at the same time without leaving the house. So that's that's something that has facilitated the uh, production, the efficiency of the production of videos. And then um, I think it's also the decentralization of media that allowed more people to enjoy the contents contributed by other popular generation. User mentality, technology development, the change of media forms. These are the important factors mentioned in Yi's answer to what the recent market status is like. There's also another important factor, the lifestyle of the users. According to Allison's article posted on Daxue Consulting website, the success of short video platforms like Douyin can be linked to lifestyles of Gen Z, which refers to people aged between 15 and 24. They are willing to interact with people they have common language with and express their views openly. Only companies that adjust their operation modes to market trends can succeed. The operation strategy is a complicated system. Strategies of Douyin and YouTube are centered around these two elements, content and algorithm. High-quality content attracts users. Well, it's definitely the content and the algorithm. Um, as for short video platform, the most important thing we think is the user base, the size of user base, which is fundamental for a sustainable business model. After all, it is um, attention economy. All apps are competing for users' time, and those who manage to get as much users' time as possible eventually win. So that's the most important thing. Um, actually, there are several indicators to measure the operating performance of a platform. And the most commonly used ones including DAU, which is daily active user, and MAU, monthly active user and user retention rate. It indicates how sticky and how active the users are. Um, at the platform. Douyin adopts the strategy of nurturing early adopters by recruiting hundreds of network celebrities who have passion for creative video production. Douyin cultivated its original creator base. Great video works attract more and more users to view and spread them, thus forming a snowball effect. Douyin adopts both PGC and UGC mode. 
On one hand, the plan invited celebrities, film stars, and singers to stay and encourage their fans to use and spend money on the platform. On the other hand, it adopts decentralized strategy to encourage ordinary people to actively participate in video production. For instance, the low production threshold allows anyone to upload videos easily. As long as you are talented and create good content, you will be noticed. Let's hear about Zoe's introduction about Douyin's recommendation algorithm. Okay, um, Douyin actually used data-driven algorithm to distribute the contents. The system will keep track of the early um, performance of each newly released video, such as the number of likes, the number of comments, and number of sharings within a certain period of time after the uh, first release. It will then pick the good performing ones and assign more user traffic to it. So it actually it ensures that good quality contents can have more exposure to users. That's how it works. Technology makes Douyin stand out from other platforms. In the editorial behind Douyin's success story, technology ranks first among all the major reasons in Douyin's success. Douyin's success in technology is inseparable from its parent company, ByteDance, a giant artificial intelligence company. Let's listen to Zoe's explanation. Um, I think it is the power of technology, actually. Um, content is actually very easy to get because we have lot of we have such huge population who has talent who can shoot the video. But I think what makes it successful is the technique, technical um, advantage of Douyin, which is the thing I said before, the data-driven algorithm. I think that one is more important than the content itself. And this one has actually very high barrier because not all companies have such um, technical um, competence to do uh, or to replicate uh, such an algorithm. That makes the whole platform very effective because all platform wanted to distribute the most or the, 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 the best content to as more people as possible. And you can't do it with human. You can only do it using computer. The purpose of the algorithm is not only to help users find the videos they are looking for, but also to maximize long-term engagement and satisfaction of the viewers. Douyin's algorithm captures a detailed portrait for each user, then realized personalized and accurate content distribution. Meanwhile, the algorithm reduces the number of ineffective advertising to ensure the better advertisement effect on the platform. The second question is, what impact did Rony and YouTube's development strategies exert on the platforms? In recent years, excellent operation strategy in content management and algorithm leads to huge user base and monetization potential for both platforms, especially YouTube. Let's take a look at Douyin first. It started from a small video sharing online community to a super platform with more than 600 million DAU in just five years. Comparing to other short video platforms, Douyin's marketing positioning brings a much higher profit potential to it. Market estimation of Douyin's revenue in 2021 is RMB 150 billion more than twice the revenue of Kuaishou in 2020. The market expected its revenue in 2021 is about 150 billion. So that's the market estimate. Yeah, I think Kuaishou and Douyin have different market positioning. Kuaishou is, is actually use a bottom-up approach. It first targets the very local people and in maybe tier three to five uh, cities. So yeah, actually very low income cities, low income population. But Douyin start another strategy. Douyin start with those fashion people and those people in first tier and second tier cities. That's how their um, market entry strategy differs. So far, advertising model proves to be the most effective revenue model on Douyin, which makes the platform to play an influencing role in the advertising industry. It is Douyin's operation that contributed to this achievement. 
UGC mode on Douyin unleashes the creativity of ordinary people. It is super easy for users to make original video content and show what they buy, eat, and do on the platform. The platform has become a hub for brand marketing. Advertisements posted on Douyin are more natural and easier to be accepted by viewers. The platform has made many products and scenic spots a hit, such as Chaka Salt Lake. Luxury brands like Michael Kors also make Douyin its partner and launches advertising campaigns on the platform. With growth of the platform's influence, more and more people will visit Douyin and expand its user base in turn. Growth in expenditure on online media advertisement is actually highlighted in online media platform market analysis released by Allied Market Research. Video content provides more targeted advertisement and offers more data that helps track the advertisement's impact. These are its advantages over the traditional advertising media. Let's go back to YouTube. Despite tens of billions of revenue from advertisement, YouTube is breaking even, just like many comprehensive platforms. But YouTube is definitely not in trouble. According to Andrew B's article, How YouTube Makes Money Off Videos, we have revenue on the top line and profits on the bottom line. Top line is high, while the bottom line might still be zero. However, its strong growing potential is still there. For YouTube and its parent company Google, the user data on YouTube is important. The longer users stay on the YouTube, the more user data is acquired. And these data are useful in conducting analysis in user behaviors for the purpose such as online marketing. Google can afford to be patient since YouTube will figure out more profit models in the future. My third question is, what are the developing trends of video technology and tool platforms marketing strategies in the future? Data-driven algorithms have already realized 85% effective play rate in short video recommendation, and this technology will continue to improve in the future. At the same time, Douyin's R&D teams keeps on working um, mitigating some if negative sides such as information cocoon effects of the algorithm. Companies research and develop team when designing and developing this algorithm has done some work to prevent this situation. For example, it will recommend some contents that are not in your interest radar but are well accepted by other users. So it will help the algorithm identify new topics that may interest you. So it will continue to do that and continue to expand your interest. Douyin's latest move in April 2021 shows that the platform takes e-commerce as priority for its future development. YouTube is aiming to expand its market and provide video directly to the television and compete with the cable operators, which huge generated user-generated content and high-quality professional-generated content, YouTube has the ambition to be a more influencing media in the future. Brief summary. In this video, we first analyzed the current market status of the video industry. Companies choose their operation modes according to the market status. Operation modes is centered around those two factors, content and algorithm. The operation modes decided that the platforms mainly rely on advertising revenue currently. For video platforms, even for those who are now breaking even, they have huge monetization potential. In the future, Douyin is planning to develop its e-commerce sector, while YouTube is planning to launch plans to expand its market skills. And it is all about my final video presentation. I hope you enjoy watching it.